Does God give up on us a cast us aside when we disobey him? What did happen to the Hebrew people after centuries of disregarding the instructions God had given them? We're continuing our look at the ancient book of Deuteronomy to obtain guidelines to help us in our daily living. In this series of lessons, we look at the book of Deuteronomy and how it was used by latter writers. We examine the points they made as it relates to us today. Father, thank you for your written word, the Bible and the history it provides. Through it, we can find direction and guidance for how we should live today. Give us a greater love for your word. Let it be a lamp that lights our way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In line with understanding the benefits of the Bible and understanding God's love and how he works in our lives today, our key text is found in Deuteronomy 10, verse 15, which says, the Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all people, as it is today. The title of this lesson is The Book of the Law. Yes, Jesus requires that we confess our sins and humble ourselves in our hearts before him. But at the same time, we should have confidence in him as a tender father who will not forsake those who put their trust in him. God does not give up on us because of our sins. We may make mistakes and grieve his spirit, but when we repent and come to him with contrite hearts, he will not turn us away. That's Prophets and Kings, page 400 and 401 adapted. This is the case with the Israelites who had turned away from God for centuries. Centuries later, something happened. Josiah became king of Judah when he was only eight years old. He was king for 31 years. He died in battle, but before his death on the battlefield, in the 18th year of his reign, something interesting happened to change the history of Israel for many years. This story is found in 2 Kings 22, and I'm reading it from the Clear Word Bible. See how it applies to us today. It says, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and to rule Judah from Jerusalem for 31 years. His mother was Jediah, the daughter of Adiah from the city of Bosketh. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, following David's example, not turning to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of his reign, while Josiah was having the temple repaired, he sent Shaphan, the raw secretary, with a message to the high priest. Josiah said to Shaphan, go to see Helkiah and get a report on how much money the priests have collected from the people entering the temple. Then tell him to take the money and give it to the men in charge of restoring the temple so that they can pay the workers. The carpenters, masons, and the other workers should be paid, and the supervisors need money to buy necessary timber and stone. They're good, honest men and don't need to keep special accounts for me of every last penny they spend. That same day, Hil Hilkiah, the high priest, told Shaphan, the royal secretary, that he had found a copy of the book of the law written by Moses buried in the debris of the temple. 
He gave it to Shaphan to read for himself. Shaphan read parts of it and got so excited he decided to take it to the king. Hilkiah said, wait, tell the king that his servant has emptied the chest of money the priest collected and has given it to the workers and the supervisor at the temple for wages and materials as he requested. Then Shaphan went and showed the king the book of the law that Hilkiah the priest had found in the temple. Josiah asked him to read some of it to him. When the king heard about the blessings and curses that were written in the book and the consequences that followed disobedience, he tore his royal robe in anguish and said to Shaphan, this is terrible. Go and get Hilkiah, the high priest, and Akbar, the son of Micaiah, Asiah, my personal attendant. Then go to the prophetess and find out from the Lord what all this means. The people of Judah have a right to know what is written because they haven't heard the law read to them since the days of my great grandfather, Hezekiah. And that's been almost a hundred years ago. If I understand it right, the Lord is greatly displeased with us as a people because of what our fathers did. And they have passed their lifestyle of disobedience on to us. So Shaphan, Hilkiah, and Akbar, Asaiah and Ahikam went to see Hilda, the prophetess, who lived and taught in the new northern section of Jerusalem called the Second Quarter. Wow, what a story. Can you imagine? For centuries, the Hebrew people cast aside God's instructions. I wonder what it was like without God's instructions. It must have been a mess, kind of like our society today. Bible experts believe that the book of the law referred to in 2 Kings 22, 8 is talking about Deuteronomy. This book of the law had been lost for many years. Then it was found while Josiah was king. The book Prophets and Kings, page 393, adapted, says, Josiah was deeply stirred as he heard read for the first time the counsels and warnings recorded in the ancient manuscripts. Never before had he realized so fully the plainness with which God had set before Israel life and death, blessings and curses. The book was filled with assurances of God's willingness to save to the highest those who should place their trust fully in him. As he had done in their deliverance from Egyptian bondage, so he would work mightily in establishing them in the land of promise and in placing them at the head of the nations of earth. Next chapter of 2 Kings you can see just how seriously King Josiah pursued to please the Lord. He made every attempt to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul. His attempt lines up with the following text, Deuteronomy 4.29, which says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 6, 5, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. 
in Deuteronomy 11.13, which says, And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today to love, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Josiah improved life in his land in many ways. He got rid of those people practicing rituals in which they speak to dead spirits. For in 2 Kings 23, 24, it says, Moreover, Josiah put away those who consulted mediums and practiced spiritualism, the household gods and the idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Deuteronomy was filled with warnings and rebukes against following the practices of the nations around them. The actions of Josiah and all the things he did, which include the ex execution of religious leaders in Samaria who worshiped idols according to 2 Kings 23, 20, which says he executed all of the priests of the high places who were there on the altars and burned men's bones on them and he returned to Jerusalem. This reveals just how far the people of God had turned from the true and living God. Instead of doing what God had instructed them to do, they compromised with the surrounding nations. What a dangerous deception. In our homes, in our own lives, there may be things that we need to get rid of to truly serve the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. What are they? God demands that we serve him with all our heart and soul. Who is he that he should make such a demand? Find out in part three, the heaven of heavens.